Merry Christmas from my family to yours. And today we're going to talk about a man that carries a lot of presents and hopefully he brought some to you. Only if you were good, of course. I have an elderly male that's been around for centuries and he goes by Saint Nick. And about 10 years ago, he was lifting a heavy package and herniated a disc in his back. This was his MRI at the time where you can see a large extruded herniated disc at L4 and L5 causing severe stenosis. He had an emergent microdiscectomy at the time and has had lower back pain ever since that surgery. He's done everything. He's done physical therapy at the North Pole. He's had a multitude of different injections, including epidural, selected nerve root blocks, as well as facet injections. He's had chiropractic management and nothing has touched his pain. He's had numerous MRIs over the years that has showed essentially this. Now his past medical history is significant for diabetes because he eats a diet of cookies and milk. He also has a broad face and a round belly and it shakes when he laughs like a bowl full of jelly. What can we do for this man to help him with his pain? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll go through the whole case. Merry Christmas, everybody. Santa Claus lifted way too many presents. I hope you guys all had a wonderful holiday and let's talk about lower back pain. I spoke about the case of an elderly male that suffered this injury while lifting presents, and he ended up having cauda equina syndrome with a large disc herniation here and having an emergent microdiscectomy. If you put too much forces on your spine, you can actually herniate your disc like this. In this case, it was extremely large, causing severe compression of his nerves and required a discectomy where the surgeon went in and removed that fragment of disc off the nerve. He did good after the surgery, but he had persistent lower back pain, and over the years, it became more and more progressive. He did all the conservative treatment. He did chiropractic management, physical therapy, tractions, medications, pain management with a multitude of injections, but his back still hurt. And what we see on his MRI years later is that this patient has lost progressive height of that disc over time. So this L4 and 5 disc is significantly more collapsed than these other very normal looking discs. You can also see these modic changes in the end plate of the bone above and below the disc, which is a sign of severe degenerative disc disease. Basically what I tell my patients is when you lose a large quantity of your disc, like he did when he had the microdiscectomy, the disc slowly shrivels up over time and that bone on bone rubbing over time hurts. So what we're dealing with is lumbar degenerative disc disease at one segment at L4 and L5. Now you could argue that he also has some slight degenerative disc disease at L5-S1, but that has not changed over the years. So the surgical options in this patient is to get rid of the bad disc and either do a fusion or a disc replacement. Now I am personally always an advocate for motion preservation, so disc replacement would be ideal. But in this particular patient, there are a few risk factors which would make him not a candidate for disc replacement. For one is his age. We typically do not do lumbar disc replacements on patients over the age of 60 because the joints in the spine can often be affected by arthritis as well as the bones may not be strong to hold the disc replacement itself. Two is his history of prior surgery. In his case with cauda equina syndrome, he had a large lumbar laminectomy and that made him not a candidate for disc replacement. Three is his weight. We often do not recommend disc replacement on patients that are overweight. So my recommendation for this patient would be an L4-5 anterior lumbar fusion. I personally prefer an anterior approach in this case because the patient's already had a posterior approach. In addition, it is totally safe, effective in restoring the disc height back to normal and thus restoring the spinal alignment. Now in an anterior lumbar fusion, we come through an incision on the lower abdomen, and typically this is done with a spine surgeon in conjunction with a vascular surgeon. We use a vascular surgeon for access so they can help mobilize some of the internal arteries and veins that lie in front of the spine. Let me show you a video on how this is done. This is showing the affected level of L5-S1, which in our case, it would be L4 and L5. Now, if we spin the si spine to the side, we can see that we're operating with the patient's belly here and the back here. We make a small incision in the patient's disc, and then we use rongeurs to go in and remove that disc piece by piece. After the disc is removed, we can trial several sizes of implants to find the right fit. And here you can see us sliding an implant into the space and restoring the alignment of the spine. Here you can see the animation of the patient before surgery and after showing significant restoration of the patient's spinal alignment. 
Now every surgeon has their preference on what type of implant that they prefer, but in my hands I usually use a 3D printed titanium implant that looks like this, and it has four screws that go into the top and bottom end plate. Now that implant has bone graft that we pack through the center of the cage that allows for one bone to fuse to the other bone. In my hands, the surgery typically takes about an hour and the patient can go home the next day. They do have lifting restrictions for about six weeks and then we slowly graduate their activities back to normal within three to six months. In this patient's case, here's the after x-rays and one year after the surgery, they are doing fantastic with very minimal residual pain and doing all the things that they like to do. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case to bring in the new year.